Hello creative souls, welcome back to my channel. Today we have, I have in store for you something special. So everybody that I talk to about watercolor always wants to know where in the world do I get started with supplies? So today I'm gonna be walking you through paint, brushes, paper, all the good stuff. So um, whether you are just getting started or maybe you're starting to build your stash, I'm here to give a breakthrough of what you need to get started in watercolor. So let's jump right in. It seems like I would start with paint when it comes to supplies, but I'm actually going to kind of go in the order of what I think is the most important in terms of quality and what you should invest in. Um, and it's kind of a toss up between paints and paper. So I'm going to start with paper. And one thing that I want to encourage you is everybody has copy paper like this or printer paper, text weight paper. I'm going to encourage you not to use something like this. The reason is, is because it's very flimsy. It's very thin. It's not going to hold the uh, paint on there. It's going to seep through. It's going to warp. There's all kinds of problems with that. So I'm going to encourage you not to use that. What you want to use is something that is much thicker and especially if it's designed for watercolor. So I have a lot of different options that I'm gonna walk you through. And again, my channel is all about being accessible and uh, you know for the beginner. So please don't feel like you have to run out and buy the most expensive thing. You know, get something affordable, get something that you can use that's not gonna break the bank, especially if this is new to you and you are just figuring out if you even like this. So um, this I got at Michael's, it's Artist Loft brand, it's very affordable. I actually bought this back in 2019 when we were traveling and it's just kind of a fun little, um, little tablet, I guess you would call it. Uh, one thing that I will encourage you to get is something with a good weight to it. So this is 140 pounds, uh, 300 GSM, I think it is. Uh, you, that is what you want. You want to have something with a good weight to it. So that's an example of a small little pad. Then you have these that have the blocks that are sort of built on there and you can take them off. You can, oh, that one's got a little paint on it. You can actually paint, tape this down. You can cut this. Um, this is the type of sheet that I used for um, my Christmas cards this year. So you can cut them down to size. You could actually create an entire painting on here. But again, this is a very, I'll say like entry level, affordable level. I don't remember the exact price, but again, what we see is it's 140 pounds. This says it's a wood blend and, um, there's a difference between student grade and artist grade that I'll go into in a little bit. I really like these Grumbachers. I think I got this at Michael's. What's fun about this is, let's see if I can do this without actually tearing it. It has these fun little, um, where you can take it out, paint on it, and then actually put it back in. So I have had a lot of fun working in this book and done a lot of paintings with um, with this. So sometimes I'll just do like sketches and things. So that's another great option. Then Canton is, is another brand that you can get very, very affordably. I think I got this at Michael's. And again, we're seeing the 140 pounds. And this is called cold press. So the difference with, between hot press and cold press is, and I don't know if it's coming across on the, the screen or not, but with cold press, I'm losing my light. With cold press, you get a little bit of a texture to it. With hot press, it's going to be smooth. So it's really going to depend on maybe the project that you're working on or, you know, what what type of look that you're looking for. Then you have little watercolor booklets. So I think this is Paul Rubens, which is one of my favorite brands. And this is just kind of a quick little easy book. I love this one just for small little practice kind of thing. And then it's perforated so you can actually pull that out, right? So a lot of times I'll grab this, um, especially if I'm traveling, something like that. Then I want to talk about higher quality papers, which once you get going and you decide you really like this, you may want to upgrade and get some good as, uh, as in um, a little bit higher quality. So this is, and there's, I think it's pronounced Arsh. Um, some people say Arches, but I think it's Arsh uh, watercolor paper. And this is cold press. It is 140 pounds, 300 GM. And what's nice about this, you'll notice, is this is pure cotton. So what you're gonna find with 
a higher quality paper is that the, it's going to accept the pigment better and it's just going to give you a nicer finish. Some of the other nice ones that I've found is Fluid brand. And I, I, I haven't even opened the Arsh or the Saunders Waterford. This is another one that is um, a little bit higher quality as well. So something to think about when it comes to paper. Next, we're going to talk about paint. Oh my goodness, man. I may have an obsession with palettes, as you can tell. Holy moly. So when it comes to paints, what you're going to find is that Typically, you're going to get either tubes like these. Um, these are Daniel Smith and some others that my dad actually gifted me with, which thank you, Papa. You'll squeeze it onto a palette, and from there, you actually can pull and you know create different varieties, right? So another way to do that is you can take empty palettes like this or pans rather and you can actually take the tubes and create your own palette they come in all kinds of different sizes where they're empty and you could actually fill them up with the tubes so you would just kind of decide what order you want it in and fill it in and lots of videos on how to actually do that if you're interested in me showing you that comment below and i will make a video about that these are examples of ones that were um just blank palettes that my dad again gifted me he's been painting for a lot of years and when i was very first getting started before i had any paints he sent me home with these two palettes and what he's done here is he's actually swatched and he's got the codes and all of that for for these so you would get an, a blank palette and you would fill in the paints that you want, and then it has little wells where you can work in there. So that's some, ex some examples of those for tubes. Um, this is a student grade version of tubes that you might find. It's Winsor & Newton, they're a fantastic brand. And again, you just open them up, you put them in the well, and one of the things that I really love about watercolor, why I love it as a medium, so many reasons. But one of them is that unlike acrylic, where you use acrylic paint and then when you're done, you um, have to wash it all away, with watercolor, it's never wasted. So literally this can sit here for a month, six months, and I can come back, rewet the surface and use it again. So I love that it's affordable. Once you invest in your paints, then you can just kind of use it over and over and over. So um, there is that. If you're going to go the tube um, route where you're buying individual colors, I would suggest that you get a warm, a yellow, a cool yellow, a warm red. This isn't an, an example here necessarily, but like have a warm blue, a cool blue, uh, just have some varieties because from there you can sort of mix and match. Then, and this is a very beginner student grade version of tubes, so you can find these. I um, uh, may have gotten this at Hobby Lobby, I'm not sure. But again, this is a very um, affordable way to sort of get started. Speaking of getting sets like this, if you find that you have, you find a palette or something like, you should pay at least um, 10, 15, not 10, you should, you should probably pay at least 15 to $20 for a set like this. If you're finding it's like 10, five, $10, it's got a lot of fillers, not a lot of pigment, which is what you're actually looking for in the paint. So you want to find a good price point that's affordable, but quality as well. The next category is these little pans or palettes. So, and I'll pull them all over here so we can see. So these are ones that are already pre-filled. Great way to get started. Love these. Um, this is probably my my most beloved one I go to all the time, Paul Rubens. Um, I think I paid a little bit more for this one. Got started with this when I was traveling a couple years ago, and this was my go-to palette. This is a Windsor, Windsor Newton, and I just watched the little things. It comes with a great little spot to mix your colors it comes came with a little brush and this is a little water well and then it has another little area i'm trying not to take it all apart where you can actually mix the paints as well this palette man is a workhorse i love this and again going back to what i was saying 
a cool yellow, a warm yellow, you know, cool, warm red, uh, cool reds, the different varieties of blues, different varieties of greens. This is a fabulous palette. And again, I do think I bought this at Michael's and I think I used my 40 off coupon, which made it very affordable. So that's those two. Another, if you travel a lot, um, I bought this other little palette where it's just a fun little thing. Um, and it ha what I did is it's a portable painter's palette. So whoop, I actually brought one of my, I think it was this one that was like empty. I actually, it's empty because I brought those over and put them in here. So it has the little wells. Lots and lots of different options. Uh, like I said, what you're looking for is a good variety of colors and, you know, something that is within the price point that you can afford. I love this one was one of the first ones that I got that I really kind of had a lot of different variety of colors. Wow, look at that. Tell me that is not amazing, right? Look at all those different colors. So this, again, is not super high quality. I don't even remember the brand. It may have been that Colorway brand. But if you're just getting started, this is a great way to get started because you can kind of see like, oh, what colors do I really like and whatever. Don't run out and break the bank and buy super expensive um, paints when you're first getting started because you really want to decide what colors you like and what sort of sparks joy. Speaking of sparks joy, here Christy uh, making art for joy's sake. She has this palette. This is my first palette of hers that I bought. That has some fun funky colors in that and um, she just she makes some fantastic palettes. So I really highly recommend her. And then you can get into fun things like metallics. I used this a lot this is a fabulous metallic palette. So that's just an example of just some palettes that you can find and kind of which way you can go. But I would start probably with the pan sets. That's going to be the most um, affordable uh, way to go when you're getting started. All right, let's talk brushes. All right, guys and gals, let's talk about brushes. So obviously once you have your paper and you have your paint, you have to have some way to get it onto your paper, right? So you're gonna need a good um, set of brushes. So what I would encourage you do, to do is have a variety. Um, start with maybe one of the different types that you can find and then decide what your style is and move from there. I would say minimally probably you're gonna want some round brushes. Round brushes are very common in watercolor. These are probably my go-to. I use these a lot. It is Princeton brand Glacier and I have a variety of sizes. So this is a 10 and the, the sizes are based on how big the bristles are. And this is a six and this is a four. So I kind of have like mama bear, papa bear, baby bear <laughs> version, if you will. Um, and then what I don't have in this one is a really tiny, tiny one. This is a good probably something that'll get you through a lot of florals. In addition to those round brushes that I that I have and love, I'm gonna put these in here after I talk about them. Okay, then I have these um, prints, uh, these silver black velvet. I think these are also by Princeton. Love, love, love these guys. Super nice quality. What you want in a brush is, what's really nice about these round ones is that when they are wet, they keep their point. And that's really what you wanna be looking for is, is it a brush that will keep the point? You're gonna buy it, it's gonna have a little glue, you're gonna rinse it off, you're gonna clean it, and then keep it um, like that. I can do a video also on how to take care of them. In addition to the round brushes, a couple other ones that you might wanna look at are, this is a mop brush, and it's just like it sounds. It's a big old thirsty brush. This is really great for like big backgrounds and um, creating what's called a wash where you have a lot of color. And then some other ones that you might look at are uh, flat brushes. So this is an example of some flat brushes. You have a, a really wide big flat one and a little tiny one and these are really nice again for washes and um, for making strokes that are very um, just like square I guess. This The reason why I love the round brushes is because you can also make a very similar 
uh, stroke to this uh, just by pushing down it'll make that same kind of stroke that this does so this is a very versatile one it has point you can and I'm going to be doing a stroke video as well and so I'll explain how you can use those in addition to the round the flat and the mop I would suggest getting a dagger these are really fun. They're named dagger because it's just like it sounds. It looks like a little something you can cut with, right? This makes some great, um, I did some Christmas trees with these and they make just amazing strokes with those as well. My other round ones, we already talked about round. And then, um, and then there's also, let's see, there's Filbert. I have this little guy here um, that is where it has, it's kind of like a flat brush, but it has a little bit of rounded edges. Those are really fun. And then I wanted to show you this fan brush. This, I know you can't tell on screen, but this is so soft and it just feels so lovely. This makes really fun little feathery kind of strokes. So lots and lots of different options, but what I would say is probably start with the round uh, brushes and get a variety of sizes. So I would get something that's very small um, and just kind of think um, mama bear, papa bear, baby bear. Um, so have one that's maybe a 10 or 12, one that's in the six to eight range, maybe the two to four range, and then this little tiny, well, this is actually two. You will find also that with different brands, their numbering is different. So just kind of think, you know, big, medium, small. And then you, the, another way to think, uh, to go about it is, you can also get these sets. This was gifted to me by a friend who is an artist in Sweden. And he uh, sent me home with these, which is very sweet. And this has the variety of sizes, all the way from 12 down to double zero. What you want to make sure is that you are getting brushes that are made for watercolor. So don't necessarily get an acrylic brush because they're designed, water brushes, uh, watercolor brushes are designed to hold the water and the pigment differently than acrylic or oil. So make sure that your brush does say watercolor. Uh, comment down below if you have questions about brushes and let's see we're gonna move on next to some other supplies all right all right let's talk about some more supplies that you'll need so when it comes to watercolor because we're working with water you will need two containers to put your water in to rinse off your brushes so you'll want to make sure that you have one for clean water right and one that is going to be for your dirty water. And so that is so that when you are getting water to maybe make a wash or something like that, that you actually don't muddy up your painting. So you'll wanna have two different vessels for that. And it can be, these are old jelly jars, or it can be just something from your kitchen, you know, just two. You'll notice that I have clear jars and I like that because you can actually see well uh, what your water situation is looking like you can see if it's getting too dirty or too muddy and then you'll obviously want to fill them up with water so the next thing that you're going to want to have is paper towels and this is absolutely essential in my opinion i always have paper towels ready to go and the reason for that is because watercolor is all about water control right? The amount of pigment versus the amount of water that you have. With the paper towels, you're able to dab off onto the paper towel. Once you've loaded up maybe some paint, you can tap it off onto your paper and then um, get the correct amount of water that's on there so that you don't have too much going onto your paper. You're going to probably want to get a water a spray bottle, especially if you have pan paints or those palettes that I was talking about, these little guys, right? And that is so that when you open up your paints, remember how I was telling you that the great thing about watercolor is that it just never, you know, gets wasted. So these are all completely dry right now. Even this is dry, this is dry. So the way that you wake up your paints is that you spray them with water. So um, once they get sprayed with water, then it gets activated. See how shiny that is now? And you can even do the same thing with your palette. And um, I love this sprayer, it's a continuous sprayer. I don't know if you heard it, like, it's just well, like, shh. these, you know, are a little inexpensive. You can buy these, it just takes a little more work, right? 
Um, but those are really nice, the spray bottles, to be able to wake up your paints and say, hey, little guys, let's play. Um, the next thing that you're going to need is somewhere to put your paints. You may have noticed already that several of my palettes have little places to mix the paint on. That's always nice when they have that. Um, but in addition, I always have a palette. So there's lots of different options. You can get these cute little ones that have, that have individual wells in them. Um, this is just a little plastic one that I got somewhere. <laughs> I never know where I get things. But I, so that's two different options are, you can get the ones with the wells where it keeps everything separated. Sometimes when watercolor is having fun and having a good time, it has a ten tendency to spread. And so those little wells make it nice to contain it. I actually think you can just use a dinner plate. And when I'm traveling on the road, very often, I will just grab a dinner plate and um, mix my paints there. And to show you what that looks like, I'll show you here. This is actually just, I think it's a dining thing, right? And I just have my paints mixed there. So sometimes they will sort of seep into the others, but I just kind of keep them all separated. So that's an example of how you can use just a white dish. And then I actually have this um, baker's tray, I think it's called, I got this on Amazon. And um, I just mix some of my paints on here. And again, I love, I just leave it like this. I never clean it <laughs> unless I really want to start with fresh uh, paints. But you can see I kind of mix my yellows in the same spot. I mix my greens in the same kind of area and then my blues and my pinks and my reds. So that's another fun thing. And this is just, I think it's a metal tin. So lots of different things. I would say what you are looking for in a palette is something that is white because you want to get the true value of what the paint is looking like. And then lastly in this section, not lastly, I'm sorry, I will say um, the last two things on in this section is sometimes I like to have something to put my paper on. So let's see if I can grab paper here. So for example, um, it's nice to be able to tape down your paper onto a surface that's not just your desk. And the reason for that is because you you may want to like move it around and, and get different angles and having something that you can then tape that down to is really helpful. This is actually artist tape and it's designed for that. If you don't have the money or you don't want to invest in this yet, I just use masking tape, good old painter's tape. I've even seen people use the, the new green one, but I have, I should have stock in this, how much I use this stuff. Um, super great because it doesn't rip the paper when you, when you lift it up. So, and, and you'll see me use this in a lot of videos as well. So those are some things that are really helpful. Um, this is just a sheet of acrylic. I love that it's lightweight. I actually at the thrift store got a cutting board. And this is another thing that you could just, um, I very often tape my work down to this guy because it's oversized and it works really nicely to um, just have it taped on here. The other thing that I really like about this cutting board, this glass cutting board, is that it has these little feet. So when it's sitting on my table, it's not scooting around. But I do like this one. Sometimes I have taken this one on the road. But that's pretty much it. So I think that's gonna wrap it up in terms of the supplies that we that you need, just the basic supplies that you need to get started. So if you have a question about any of the things that I talked about, please let me know in the comments, um, you know, and, and I will be happy to make you a video. So I want you to embrace the freedom of watercolors, definitely play and explore. Please enjoy the process, you guys, with the right supplies, a little bit of creativity. Your watercolor journey is just bound to be fun and, and a fun adventure. So thank you for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm really trying to build my channel so um, other people can find me as well. All right, take care and happy watercoloring.